Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel, Tutorial by Sir Raymond. My name is Mr. Jem Raymond Ischen, Master Teacher 2 from Escalante Central Elementary School, Schools Division of Escalante City, DepEd Region 6, Western Visayas. Click like and share if this video tutorial helps you. Don't forget to click subscribe below to keep updated for my future tutorial. For your suggestions, especially on the topic for my next tutorial, please leave your comment below. Hope you learned something in my video lessons for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Stay home and stay safe. Go forth, rise and shine to us all. Escalante Central Elementary School. You've entrusted us your vision. Building your dreams would be our mission. Good day, Grade 6. How are you doing? Hope you're fine and safe. Are you ready with our lesson for this week? We are now on our Week 5 for Quarter 2 for School Year 2020-2021. What will we do for this week? Okay, remember this. We will check first your first summative test last week. And after that, we will check also your assessment last week about the body system. And after checking all these tests, we will have our second summative test. I told you last time that we will have our second summative test about the characteristics of the vertebrate animals. I hope everybody studied your lessons. And after that, we will discuss your module 5 about the characteristics of the invertebrate animal. Again, I will repeat. What will we do for this week? O para dili maglibog, iman ini. Mag-check usa ta sa ato ang first summative test nga inyong gikuha last week. Pagkahuman na og check, mag-check na pud ta sa inyong assessment party sa vertebrate animals. Pagkahuman na tong checking, mo test na po ta. Mukuha na po ka sa ato ang second summative test. Parti sa characteristics of the vertebrate animals. After your summative test, we will discuss your module 5 about the invertebrate animals. Get it? Very good. This time, please get your notebook. I hope you copied your answers in your summative test last week. Do it now. So we will check now your first summative test. Are you ready? Let's start. Number one. Which of the following statements describes the work of skeletal system? A. It digests foods. B. It supports the body. C. It protects the body from the outside world. D. It is the organ system consisting of skin, hair, nails, and glands. What's the correct answer? The correct answer is... Skeletal system supports the body. Check your answers there. Number 2. Which of the following is not a function of skeletal system? A. It serves a strong framework of the body. B. It determines the shape of the body. C. It removes waste of the body. D. It produces blood cells. What's the correct answer? The answer is... C. It removes waste of the body. Skeletal system does not remove waste.
Number 10. Refer to the illustration below. Identify the part label X. A. Pharynx. B. Lung. C. Trachea. Or letter D. Diaphragm. The correct answer is? Of course, that's letter B. Lungs. Number 11. Refer to the diagram below. The air will go to nose, will go to pharynx, and the food is prevented to enter. So what part is that? The air will go to the larynx, then the trachea, then the lungs, and to the blank. Box 1. Refer to the part which prevents the food from entering the respiratory system, which is in A. Lungs, B. Alveoli, C. Bronchi, or letter D. Epiglottis. Correct. Epiglottis is the part wherein it prevents food from entering the respiratory system. Number 12. What is the function of the respiratory system? A. To get rid of the body waste and to keep the composition of the blood constant. B. To distribute needed materials to cells and collect waste materials from them. C. To protect the body from microorganisms and foreign substances. D. To supply the blood with oxygen in order for the blood to deliver oxygen to all parts of the body. The correct answer is... Letter D. The respiratory system will supply oxygen to the blood. The blood will deliver the oxygen to all parts of the body. Next, number 13. Which does not describe circulatory system? A. Is the body system responsible for extracting nutrients and other useful substances from food? B. It is an organ system that moves or circulates the blood around the body. C. It distributes nutrients and oxygen to the cells of the body. Or letter D. It takes away waste materials from the cells and brings them back to excretory system. The correct answer for number 13 is... Letter A, is the body system responsible for extracting nutrients and other useful substances from the food? Because letter A is the function of your digestive system. Next, number 14. What is the main function of your blood? A, stores nutrients for the body. B, balances the amount of salt and water in the body. C, filters waste products from all parts of the body. Letter D distributes absorbable food nutrients throughout the body. The correct answer is the main function of your blood is to distribute absorbable food nutrients throughout the body. Number 15. How will you take care of your circulatory system? A. Eat fatty foods. B. Eat nutritious foods. C. Eat junk foods. Or letter D. Eat sweet foods. The correct answer is Letter B, eat nutritious foods. Number 16, how will you take care of your nervous system? 1. Immunization or vaccination as early as young age help fight diseases. 2. Exercise regularly. 3. Do not smoke or use other tobacco products. 4. Get plenty of rest. 5. Eat a balanced diet. 6. Drink plenty of water and other fluids. A. 1, 2, 3 only. B, 4, 5, 6 only. C, 1, 3, 5 only. Or letter D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The correct answer for number 16 is letter D, all of the above. Number 17, what is the use of the brain? A, conducts impulses to and from the sensory organs to the brain slash spinal cord. B, transmit impulses between the brain and the body. C. Controls all body processes. Or letter D. Directs voluntary movement. The brain is for controlling your body processes. Number 18. What is the function of the nervous system? A. It controls all body activities. B. It removes liquid waste materials. C. It transports blood and nutrients to all parts of the body. D. It carries oxygen to the cells and removes carbon dioxide from the body. The correct answer for number 18 is letter A. Your nervous system controls all your body activities. 19. How is your circulatory system work together with your respiratory system? A. Circulatory system breaks down food to be absorbed by the respiratory system as it provides oxygen to the cells. B. Circulatory system carries nutrients to the respiratory system as it provides oxygen to the circulatory system. 
C. Circulatory system carries messages to the respiratory system as it provides oxygen to the circulatory system. D. Circulatory system carries oxygen to the cells of the respiratory system as it provides nutrients to the circulatory system. The correct answer for number 19 is... Letter B. Circulatory system carries nutrients to the respiratory system as it provides oxygen to the circulatory system. Next, number 20. How is your digestive system work with your circulatory system? A. Digestive system provides oxygen to the circulatory system and circulatory system provides nutrients to the digestive system. B. Digestive system provides support to the circulatory system and circulatory system pumps blood to the digestive system. C. Digestive system digests food into simpler form which will be needed by the circulatory system and the circulatory system distributes nutrients to the body parts. D. Digestive system excretes waste products produced by the circulatory system and the circulatory system interprets message coming from the digestive system. The correct answer for number 20 is Letter C. Digestive system digests food into simpler form which will be needed by the circulatory system and the circulatory system distributes nutrients and oxygen to the body part. This is the part 2 of your test, which is your performance task. Now you choose at least one body system and discuss what you have learned about it. Now explain how each part of the chosen body system work together. Now you can create a PowerPoint in presenting your discussion. But if you do not have resources in doing the slide presentation, you may write your discussion or insights in short size on paper. And you may insert illustration or pictures in your presentation for your discussion. And be creative in your presentation. So again, you are asked to choose one body system and you, and you will explain the function of each part of that particular system. You may write it in a band paper or you may have it using a PowerPoint presentation. So I hope everybody had already submitted pero naaji uban na wala pa ka submit. Okay? I'll give you time to submit this no? by next week. I will wait until next week for you to submit your output both on land and in water. Number 9. Ostriches are classified as birds but cannot fly. Why? A. They have thick feathers. B. They have heavy weight. C. They are afraid of heights. Letter D. They prefer to be in land. Letter B. They have heavy weight. Okay, bukat sila, din sila ka lupad. Number 10. Some animals were taken from their natural habitat by hunters or people and were being sold in pet shops. Which of these will do in order to minimize these activities that endanger different species of animals? A. Help the hunters to find a pet shop to sell their catch. Letter B. Report illegal activity to a forest ranger or authority. C. Buy an animal being sold to be your pet. Letter D. Take care of animals for a while and then sold it. The correct answer is... Letter B. Report illegal activity to a forest ranger or authority. Now, what's your score? Good job because I know you've got a very good score on this activity. Now, are you ready to take our second summative test? And the coverage of our summative test this week would be about your lesson last week, the vertebrate animals. I hope you've studied your lesson. So again, this is our second offline digital summative test. Please get one half lengthwise and of course your ball pen. And write second summative test on the top of your paper. Second summative test in science 6. Do it now. Tapos na? Okay, get ready. Direction. Read each item carefully. Write the letter of your choice in your answer sheet. So meaning, you write the letter only in your paper. Okay? I will give you mm, 20 minutes to answer your summative test. Ready? Your time starts now.
Itong 1 up to 25 sa imuhang book. No? Because, check first your summative test no? before we start our lesson next week. Okay? So again, please copy your answers now in your notebook. Do it now. This time, we will discuss your Module 5 about the animals' characteristics of invertebrates. Are you ready? But before that, let us have first the what I know part of your module. Let's see what you already know about the topic. And this could be found on page 1 of your module. No need to write your answer. Dili na magsulat. Ato arang and siran ugdungan. We will answer all together this part. Para dili na kaayawan kung sulat. Ang gusto nga ko, mamati na lang ka. Okay? Sa assessment na lang ka nga partron mo sulat. Pero kung ba nga mga, mga activities, what I know, o mga succeeding activities, we will answer it orally. We will answer it all together. Understood? Okay, very good. Let's start with number one. Which of these groups of animals is invertebrate? A. Nematodes, annelids, and platyhelminthes. Letter B. Crustaceans, amphibians, and mollusks. C. Mollusks, insects, and mammals. Letter D. Reptiles, fishes, and birds. So, what is the part answer? Oh, bisan mamati ka, pero kinanglan, mag-participate po ka. No? Kung pangutahan unta ka, bisan wala ko kabati, you have to answer para at least, bisan wala ka sa eskwilahan, mura na punta o oh, kaklase nga naa sa sulod sa classroom. Okay, class? Mag-participate lang po ka, no? Total naman si mama ni mo, si papa ni mo na nagabantay. No, at least kabalo siya nga. You are really participating in our discussion. Okay na? Okay, number one, what's the correct answer? Letter? What's your answer? It's letter A. Nematodes, annelids, and platyhelminthes are invertebrates. We will know later what is this invertebrate all about. I know, my idea na mo. Sana because I have already said it last week no, about invertebrate. But we will discuss more about invertebrate this week. Now, number two. Which group of invertebrates is divided into segments with a ring appearance? Letter A. Sponges. B. Ethnoderms. C. Cnidarians. Or letter D. Annelids. The correct answer is annelids. We will know later what are examples of annelids. 3. To what subgroup of arthropods do invertebrates with four pairs of legs belong? So, four pairs, upat kaparisan nga legs, subuti pasabot, walo ka legs tanan. What group is that? A. Echnoderms B. Crustaceans C. Arachnids or letter D. Nematodes the correct answer is letter What's your answer? So it's letter C arachnid. 4. Which group of animals is invertebrate? A butterfly, mosquito, fly, grasshopper. B bird, dog, chicken, cat and ant. C fish, spider, snake, butterfly and letter D all of the above. What's your answer? Diindira nila ang invertebrate. Correct letter? A. Butterfly, mosquito, fly, and grasshopper. Fly ka ni Klas Langaw. Animals like clams, jellyfish, butterfly, and grasshopper are examples of A. Invertebrates, B. Vertebrates, C. Mammals, D. Amphibians. The correct answer is? Obviously, that's invertebrate. Six. Mollusks, sponges, ichnoderms, and nematodes are classified as blank A. Invertebrates, B. Vertebrates, C. Mammals, D. Amphibians. The correct answer is letter A. Invertebrates. Three, seven. Which group of animals is invertebrate? A. Frog, 
mosquito, cat, grasshopper. B. Bird, dog, chicken, cat, and ant. C. Fish, spider, snake, dog. D. Earthworm, snail, bee, bug. What's the correct answer for number 7? It's letter... Letter D. Earthworm, snail, bee, and bug. What do we call the animals which do not have bone structure or backbone? A. Vertebrates. B. Invertebrates. C. Peripherans. D. Nidargans. The correct answer is... Invertebrates. Tails, butterfly, bee, and clam are examples of invertebrates. This means that these animals possesses this distinguishing characteristic. A. Presence of backbone. B. Absence of backbone. C. Lack of cranium. Or letter D. Presence of cranium. The correct answer is... Absence of backbone. Number 10. What are the distinguishing characteristics of invertebrates that differ from vertebrates aside from absence of backbone? A. Invertebrates are mostly stronger and bigger than vertebrates. B. Invertebrates are mostly smaller and weaker than vertebrates. C. Invertebrates are complex compared to those vertebrates. D. Invertebrates do not have segmented bodies. What do you think is the answer for number 10? Unsa ang nakalahi sa vertebrates of invertebrates aside sa backbone? Yes, letter? Letter B. Invertebrates are mostly smaller and weaker than vertebrates animals. What's your score? Again, it's okay. That's, that was just a pretest. I'm sure you will be learning all of those later on. We mentioned it last week that animals are divided into two groups, the vertebrates and the invertebrates. Now, this time, we will focus our attention on invertebrate animals. Now, both of these can be divided into smaller groups. So, just like the vertebrate last week, no? the vertebrates are divided into five groups. No? And also, invertebrates can also be divided into smaller groups. Do you want to know more about these invertebrate animals? This time, we will determine the distinguishing characteristics of invertebrate animals. Are you excited? But before we proceed, let us answer the what's in part of your module. So, this could be found on page 3 of the module. So, this is just a sort of review of last week's lesson. No? So, all you have to do is to identify true or false. Now, number 1. Mammals are warm-blooded animals that are born alive. True or false? Or the view lang ni. The correct answer is... Yes, true. Mammals are warm-blooded. The bodies of mammals cannot adjust with the temperature of the surrounding. Next, number two. Reptiles are cold-blooded vertebrates that are hatched from eggs. True or false? The correct answer is true. Reptiles are cold-blooded. Next, number three, vertebrates have no economic importance to our environment. Correct answer is, of course, false. Vertebrates have economic importance to our environment. Just like the pig, the chicken, no? and the fish are being sold as food. No, that's why they are important to our environment economically. Number four, there is a significant relationship between vertebrates and invertebrates. True or false? True, because the food of some of the vertebrates animals are the invertebrates, just like the frog. The food of the frog are the insects. Insects are invertebrate animals. Number five, invertebrate animals are important to human beings. True or false? Of course, true, just like the, the squid. No, the clams, they are used as food for humans. I have here an illustration. You study the illustration. Can you identify the animals present in the picture? Now, can you list down the animals found in the picture? What are they? Could you guess? Yes, we have butterfly, we have dragonfly. We have the worm, we have the snail. 
How do they differ from one another? How do they differ from vertebrate animals? Unsa kaha ang nakalahi, ani nga mga picture or ani nga mga animals sa atong gi-discuss ganiha or last week na vertebrate animals. May kalainan ba sila? Of course na. Ah, in this illustration, what do you call these animals? Yes, very good. They are invertebrate animals. Invertebrate animals are animals without backbone or vertebral column. So, wala sila yung backbone class unlike sa vertebrate. So, this is the distinguishing characteristics of invertebrate animals. Invertebrate animals have no backbone. Invertebrates are simple animals. Simply rin sila kayo, mga gagmay rin kayo mga invertebrate animals class because they don't have backbone. Its body parts and functions are simple compared to the vertebrate animals. No? But then, i-compare mo na po sa vertebrate animals, this group of animals are considered the largest in number. Sila ni ang pinakadaghan nga numero or pinakadaghan nga mga animals here on earth compared to the vertebrate animals. And they are very diverse. Lain-lain sila, no? Lain-lain itsura. That's why they can be grouped, no? Also, just like vertebrate animals. So, the main groups of the invertebrate animals are Nidarian, Nematode or Nematoda, Mollusks, Anilida, Echnoderm, Sponges, Arthropods, and Platyhelminthes. We will discuss each of the group as we go along. Let's start with the arthropods. Any idea? Sa imuhang nabasahan, nakitan sa internet, do you have an idea about these arthropods? What are they? So these are examples of arthropods. Yan. Okay? Yan. Okay, these are arthropods. Can you identify these animals? Kaya ilara ka? Ang uban, nakaguro na ilahan. Pero ang uban, murag wala ka. Ayan na. What are the basic characteristics of arthropods? Arthropods have segmented bodies. Their body is somewhat composed of different layers. Just like here in the illustration. Their body is made up of many identical looking segments. Arthropods have jointed appendages, just like here. Appendages is something like a small part, a part that is connected to a larger part, just like here on the screen. Na just like mga antenna nila, no? Ilang mga gawai-gawai. So that's jointed appendages. And their segmented bodies are made up of three sections. We have the head, the mid section, and usually the hind section. Ilang ulo, ilang lawas, o ang ilahang mga il. Now, these appendages can be made up of antenna, the wings, the legs, or the mouth part of the arthropods. And usually, these arthropods are the largest in group also. And, of course, arthropods have hard outer skeleton. No? Ang ilahang, ang ilahang muragbukong nila plus na asa gawas. Unlike sa ito, ano? Skin. Nasa sulod ang gahi or ato ang skeleton. Ilahan na lang naas sa gawas. That's why, gahi, no? Ikapo ni mo ng mga insects. Mga medyo ang langlaw sa na gahi. No? Just like here. Yan, mga crab, spider. And of course, these arthropods are considered are the largest group in the animal kingdom. Sila ni, sa tanan ng mga kinds or classifications sa animals, sila ni ang pinakadaghan, mga arthropods. That's why, kaya sila ang pinakadaghan, they can be divided also into groups. Yun sa man pag-divide sa arthropods. They are divided according to the number of legs. You will know it later. What are examples of arthropods? Well, let's see. That one. Are you familiar with that? Yes, that's crab. Crab is an arthropod. Next. This one. Yes, that's scorpion. 
Next, we have the grasshopper, the bees, the bugs, the ants, the butterfly, the dragonfly. What's that? They're all? They are all insects. Next, another arthropod is this one. That's spider. Very good. Next, this one. That's millipede. And we have also this one. That's centipede. Uh, as I said, they are all arthropods. The centipede, the scorpion, the crab, spider, the millipedes, and the insects. They are arthropods. But, they can be divided into different groups. Di unsa man ni sila pag grupo. They are grouped according to the number of legs. Lantawa ang mga legs nila. Diba? Centipede. Lantawa ang legs sa millipedes. Daghan. Ang centipede, daghan po. Pero lantawa ang mga legs sa spider, sa crab, sa scorpion, o sa insects. So, grupuhon na to sila. So, what are the different groups of arthropods? Arthropods are the largest group of animals in the animal kingdom, which can be further classified based on the number of legs. So we have the insects or the class insecta. And we have the crustaceans or the class crustacean. We have the arachnids or the class arachnida. And we have the myropods. Okay, they are all myropods, but these myropods can be divided into two. Again, we have the class Kyloplooda and the class Diplopoda. Now, let's have the class Crustacean under arthropods. They have five pairs of legs. So, meaning, they have ten legs tanan. No? Lima kaparisan nga legs. So, isipun na nimo pulo ka legs tanan ang naani class Crustaceans. So, what are examples of this? This one. Oh. That's crab. Okay? And we have this one. That's shrimp. And we have the lobsters. Okay? So all these animals breathe through their gills. May mga hasang na sila. That's why they can live in water. And they have compound eyes. Daghan ni sila o Mata. So, that's why kining mga crab, kusog kay mudagan or very sensitive, unay mga tao, mudagan dayon, no? And we have the class insecta or the insects. So, insects have three pairs of legs. So, meaning, we have six legs for the insects. What are examples of insects? Can you identify that insect? That? A beetle. Next is this one. That's another example of insects. We have the ant. Next is we have the bee or buyog. Next is the termite or anai. And we have what's that? Obviously that. Butterfly. Butterflies are also in environment. So, millipedes are under arthropods, specifically the myropods or the class Diplopoda. Let's proceed to the second group of invertebrates. We are done with the arthropods. Let's go to the mollusks. So, these are examples of the mollusks. Can you identify some of these animals? Now, the term mollusks, no, come from the Latin word mollis, no, which means soft. Ah, lang. Occupy usually live in aquatic and some in the terrestrial habitat. No, from the seas to valleys and mountains. Shells protect their soft bodies. No, these animals have shells. No, some of these animals have shells that protects their soft body. No, may kapuli ni mo ilang mga lawas class mga hubok pero na iuban na sila sa sulod sa shell. The, the shell will be the one to protect their soft bodies. Mollusks are soft-bodied animals with shells inside or outside their bodies called exoskeleton. We call the shell or the hard part of their bodies as exoskeleton. So what are examples of the mollusks? Again, that's 
That's snail. Next, we have this one. Yes, that's also an invertebrate animal that they are classified as mollusks. They are clam. Next is mm, that's squid or nupus. This one, talaba. That's oyster. And we have this one. Scallops. And we have octopus. And we have also the mussels. So again, the mussels, the snails, the scallops, the clam, the oyster, squid, and octopus are all examples of mollusks. Let's proceed to the third classification of the invertebrates. They are echinoderms. So these are examples. So as you've seen here on the screen, these are examples of echinoderms. So echinoderms are marine animals with spiny endoskeleton. So na yung mga taliwis taliwis class na ang ilahang mga lawas. Echinoderms have watery vascular system. So, these are system of fluid-filled tubes. So, the tube feet usually used for feeding, moving, and sensing the environment. The tubes in their bodies are made for feeding, for moving, and for sensing the environment. And also, they are radially symmetrical. Radial symmetry means no left and right sides. This means that they only have top and bottom ends. All live in the marine environment and most prefer to stay at the bottom of the sea. Although, there are some are free, free floating, okay? just like mga starfish. No? And then, these ichnoderms have no head and they have also no tail regions. Now, what are examples of ichnoderms? So, again, this is a starfish or sea star. Next is mga tuyum or sea urchin and somewhat the same with the sea stars they are brittle stars and we have the the sea cucumber so the sea cucumber the brittle star the sea urchin and the sea stars or starfish are or are all classified as echnoderms let's have the fourth classification of the invertebrate animals. So these animals are pore bearing animals. So pores are the opening all over their body. Ang ilang lawas na puno og mga buslot buslot. So dira sa mga buslot class, dira usually na sila ga kaon or ginakuha ang ilahang mga pagkaon. What you see here on the screen, no? These are four bearing animals. Ah. So these are examples of poreferans. So poreferans again are four bearing animals which attach themselves to rocks. Pirminas laga dikit sa mga rocks or sa mga sea bed or sea floors. So they are simple animals no, which spend their lives attached to rocks or under water surfaces. And examples of these are sponges. No? So, dili ni sila mga corals na sa because ang corals, lain na po na siya. Lain na po na sila nga mga animals. Yes, corals are also animals. So, again, these are poreferans or sponges. So, next we have the Nidarians. Okay, Nidarians. These are examples of Nidarians. Nidarians are hollow intestine animals. They have one body opening and have two layer cells. So they are aquatic and they live at the bottom of the sea. They can also live floating in water like the jellyfish. So jellyfish usually have tentacles. These tentacles are used to catch their prey. Now their prey will serve as their food. Kaya abinin mo gagaway-gaway rin ang klas na abinin mo tanong but then they are animals. What are examples of Nidarians? This is a jellyfish. Next is corals are examples of Nidarians. So corals are invertebrate animals. And we have the sea anemones. 
we have the hydra. Hydra, coral, sea anemones, and jellyfish are all examples of cnidarians. Now let's have the world of worms. Worms can be classified into three. In the first group of worm is platyhelminthes. So platyhelminthes are also called flatworms. Platyhelminthes are flattened, elongated worm-like animals. And they are called such because of their flat, ribbon-like bodies as you see here on the screen. No? Lapat or flat ang ilahang mga lawas. Most of the flatworms are parasites, no? What, such as the tapeworms here and the flukes, okay? But then, there are also non-parasitic flatworms, just like the planarians, so here. And so, these are also non-parasitic. So, these flatworms found in lakes and ponds. But then, most of them, just like flukes and tapeworms, are parasitic. But then, they are all under platyhelminthes or flatworms. Now, the second type of worm and the seventh classification of invertebrate animals are nematodes. No? You see here on screen are examples of nematodes. Nematodes are round worms. So, they are elongated, unsegmented worm-like, thread-like animals. No, hindi siya segmented ilang lawas, kundi round lang ilang lawas. Now, they are free-living or parasites of humans. Na, itong mga bito class, no, naanagbaw ni sila. And they are also in found in plants and other animals. They found in water, in the soil, and in other plants, no, and animal as parasites. Most roundworms are big enough to be seen without the aid of microscope. Unlike other worms, these roundworms can be seen in our naked eyes. So, examples of nematodes are asterisks. Next is the vinegar eel. We have the hookworms. We have the pinworms found in the intestines of mga bituka. And we have the trichina worms. So, these are examples of nematodes. Nematodes are worms and they are all invertebrate animal. The third type of worm and the eighth classification of invertebrate animals are annelids. Annelids are segmented worms, no? And these are elongated worm-like animals with external evident segmentation. Okay, so as you see here on the screen, their bodies again are segmented and they are also called ring animals. They have body no, segmented that allow for specialization of tissues and for efficient movement, no? just like the earthworms. No? So, ang ilang mga segmented bodies allows them to move also freely because they don't have feet. But then, because of their bodies, they are able to move efficiently. And we have the leeches. Leeches are mga linta. And we have the lugworms. So the earthworms, the leeches, and the lugworms are all examples of annelids. So again, these are the eight main classifications of invertebrate animals. We have the arthropods, the ichnoderms, and the sponges, or the peripherans. The fourth one is cnidarians. We have the mollusks. And of course, we have the worms. And worms are subdivided again into three classifications. And we have the platyhelminthes or the flat worms. We have the nematodes or the round worms. And we have the annelids or segmented worms. This time, let's have the what's more part of your module. And this could be found on page 6. No need to write your answer. We will answer it orally. Understood? Directions. Give at least two examples of the following invertebrates. So again, we will give examples in each of the following invertebrate animals. Let's have the arthropods. Arthropods examples are the crabs, the scorpion, insects, spider, millipedes, centipedes, and barnacles. 
Let's have the mollusks. Examples of the mollusks are the snails, the clams, the squids. Echinoderms. Examples of echinoderms are the sea stars, the sea urchins, the sea cucumber. And the preference, they are sponges. B. To which group of invertebrates the following animals belong? Number 5. It's... What animal is that? Jellyfish. And jellyfish is an example of... Nidarian. Next, number 6. That's tapeworm. Tapeworm is a flatworm. And flatworm is... Platyhelminthes. Next, number 7. Number 7 is a vinegar eel. Vinegar eel is a roundworm. And that's... Nematodes. And we have the segmented worm, leech or linta. So that's anilids. Okay, let's answer now the what I have learned part of your module. This could be found on page 6. So I learned that invertebrates are animals without. So let us complete the paragraph by filling up the missing. So again, do not write your answer. We will answer it orally and we will answer it all together. Ready? I learned that invertebrates are animals without... What's the answer? Without backbones. Correct. Invertebrates can be classified into smaller group, each of which has certain characteristics. So invertebrates include... We have eight, right? We have arthropods, the mollusks, the ichnoderm, the porphyrons, the platyhelminthes, the nematodes, the annelids, and nidarians. Again, these are the different classifications of invertebrate animals. Again, let us read all together. I learned that. Invertebrates are animals without backbones. Invertebrates can be classified into smaller groups, each of which has certain characteristics. Invertebrates include arthropods, mollusks, ichnoderms, porphyrins, platyhelminthes, nematodes, annelids, and nidarians. Let's have the what I can do part of your module. Again, do not write your answer. This could be found on page 7 of your module. A. Cross out the animals which do not belong to the group. Let's have letter A. Starfish, butter, butterfly, and sea cucumber. Kung sang animal ato ang I cross out. Of course, the answer is butterfly. Starfish and sea cucumbers are ichnoderms, while butterfly is an insect. Next, letter B. Mosquito, spider, and ant. What organism or what animal should cross should be crossed out? Correct, spider. Because mosquito and ants are insects, while spider is an arachnid. Next, letter C. Jellyfish, sea archin, and corals. What's the correct answer? Correct. The sea archin. Because jellyfish and corals are nidarians, while the sea archin is ichnoderm. May mga gawai, na? Letter D. Snail, Weed and tapeworm. What should be crossed out? Correct, the tapeworm. Because the snail and the squid are mollusks, while the tapeworm is platyhelminthes or worm. Letter E, the leech, the earthworm, and the crab. What should be crossed out? Correct, it's the crab. The leech and the earthworm are all annelids, so while crab is arthropods or underclass crustaceans. Letter B. Complete the table below by supplying the missing data. Let's have the porephyra or porephyrans. Examples are sponges. And the distinguishing characteristic is 
four bearing animals. May mga bus, bangag-bangag ang ilang lawas. Next, number two, Nidaria or Nardarians. We have examples, hydras and jellyfish. The distinguishing characteristic is two-layer cells. Next, number three, platyhelminthes. Examples are flatworms and tapeworms. And the distinguishing characteristic is they are flattened, elongated, and worm-like animals. Number four, examples are earthworms, leeches, and the distinguishing characteristic is the segmented, elongated, worm-like animals. They are, of course, annelids. They are segmented animals or segmented worm-like animals. Next, number five, mollusks. What are examples of mollusks? Mollusks include snails, clams, and octopus. And the distinguishing characteristic is they are soft-bodied animals with shell inside or outside their soft bodies. Nematodes. Nematodes, examples of nematodes are the vinegar eel and the ascaris. No? They are elongated, unsegmented, worm-like animals. Or they are called also as roundworms. Number seven, arthropods. What are examples of arthropods? Arthropods are crabs and scorpions. What are the distinguishing characteristics of arthropods? Segmented bodies and tough skeleton. Next, number eight, the ichnoderms. What are examples of ichnoderms? We have the sea stars and brittle stars. And the distinguishing characteristic is they are spiny skin animals. Again, these are the examples and the distinguishing characteristics of the different groups of invertebrate animals. These are all examples of invertebrate animals. Now, would you play with these animals, class? Yes, of course not. No, they should not. They are not supposed to be played because they are animals and they are part of our ecosystem. Pero, kung may chance mang yun nga mga maduaan na to sila no?
participate before ka magsukod sa atong iklase, we will check your assessment for this part. Do it now! Reminder class, unsa ang imuhang ipasap si karon nga si Mana. Okay, do it now.
a class for next week, we will have our third summative test na po, no? Ang coverage at uh, ang summative test next week would be about the arthropods, the mollusks, the ichnoderm, the peripherans, the nidarians, the tihelmentes, nematodes, and annelids. These are the invertebrate animals. So please copy also your pointers for your third summative test next week. Let's do it now. Okay, kung gusto ninyo class, malantaw ang mga past na nga videos, even ang present na ito nga mga video lessons, add to lang mo sa www.ss.info. This is our official website for Escalante Central Elementary School. Okay? Nagaray menu bar sa babaw, pwede nyo na maklik no? ang mga videos na ito from kindergarten to grade 6. Okay? And also, please be reminded... So please tune in to our Radio Atraka every day for our radio-based instructions. And also, please do watch our TV-based instruction channel IBC. Okay? But if you missed the episodes, you can watch it at YouTube. Okay? Subscribe DepEd TV on YouTube. Okay? To keep updated for all the video lessons of our TV-based instructions. Okay? If you have questions also, class, you can contact me during our offline and online kamustahan that is scheduled every Wednesday, 2.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon. Okay? So please do contact me on our scheduled dates and time. In case class na medyo magka-differentia itong USB, di siya ma-play, yan po kaka-access atong website, sa YouTube channel na ko, pwede ni mo siya malantaw ang mga science review lessons. Okay? The past and present na itong mga lessons, no? Naradatanan sa akong YouTube channel, Tutorial by Sir Raymond. If you want, you can subscribe to my channel para isang pinali mo siya i-search, automatic, na na siya dinadayon sa imuhang na uh, search engine. No? So, please uh, do subscribe my channel to keep updated on my video lessons. Thank you so much class for participating. That's all for this week. See you next week. Have a blessed week ahead and don't forget to stay home and be safe always. Go on, rise and shine to us.